Hello everyone and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In our tutorial for today, we're going to answer one of our viewers' question. In our lesson number N216, How to Script Live Events in Roblox, a viewer named Joe asks how to add text labels to the timer for the event. So basically what Joe is asking for here is how to put the countdown clock in a text label so it appears on the screen as opposed to having it in the output window. All right, so here it is, Joe. Here's the answer to your question. So now we're back inside Studio. Let's take a look at what we have so far. In my server storage, I have the exploding part. So my exploding part has a sound file and a script. It's just gonna make the part explode. In my server script service, I have a script and a module script, which is gonna handle the live event. For more details on any of this, you can refer to our prior tutorial on live event. Now, if we go down to the started GUI, you can see I've added a text label here. So my text label is inside the screen GUI, which is inside the started GUI. Notice here that my text label is inside the started GUI, which is on the client side, and my script to handle the live event. It's inside the server script service, which is on the server side. So in order for the server side to put a text inside this text label, it's gonna have to use a remote event. So we're gonna go to our replicate storage. In fact, we're gonna create three different remote events. Because we have three different cases here, we have the case where the player joins the event at the exact time, and the case where the player joins early and another case where the player joins the, the event late. So for when, when the player joins at the exact time, we just want to remove the text label from the screen. So let's go to our replicate storage. We're going to add a remote event to remove the label. Remove label. The next remote event that we're going to need is the one where we need to show the time remaining on the screen. So let's add a remote event and rename that to time remaining. And finally, we're going to add the last one. And this is for when the, the player has missed the event. So we're going to rename this event to miss event. In our script for the live event, we're going to create three new variables to reference to our three remote events. So let's declare local. The first one, let's say remove label equals to game dot replicated storage colon wait for child remove label. And we're going to need one for the time remaining and one for the miss event. Now let's go down to the section here where the player joins the game at the exact time when the event is going to start. We want to remove that text label from the screen. So let's use this remote event, remove label. We're going to fire that remote event. So we're going to say remove label, colon, fire, all clients. And now let's go over to the local side. We're going to add a script to our screen GUI here to change this text label. So first, let's add a local script. We're going to declare our screen GUI. Let's call it local. I'll just say part for the screen GUI equals to script dot parent. Now we're going to catch that event that is being fired from the server side. So we're going to say game dot replicate storage dot remove label dot on client event colon connect to a function. And inside this function, we just want to remove the text label. So we're going to say part 
dot text label dot visible we're going to change that to false so we're, we're changing the visible property of the text label to false to remove the text label case number one is done let's go back to the script we're going to take care of case number two now so instead of printing this here in the output window we're going to fire a remote event called time remaining so we're going to say time remaining colon fire all clients and we're passing in a parameter which is the time remaining so the time remaining is start time minus current time i'm just going to copy this i'll paste it in here we're passing in that re time remaining let's go back to the local script now we're going to copy this I'll paste it here. This is going to be time remaining. I'm going to have one parameter coming in. I'll just call it T for time remaining. And then we're going to change the text label here to display that time remaining. So we're going to have part dot text label dot text, which is the text property of the text label. We'll set it equals to. Let's go back to the server side. We're going to grab this text here from the server side. So that's what we're going to display inside the text label. Event will start in, and this one is just going to be T. Dot dot seconds. Let's go back to the script. We have one more case to do, which is the final case where the player has missed the event. So here we're gonna call, we're gonna fire the miss event, remote event. So we're gonna say miss event, colon fire all clients. Also here, we're gonna pass in the current time. Let's go back to the local side. We're going to copy this. So this is where we're catching that event that is being fired from the server side. And this one is going to say miss event. One parameter coming in, it's T, it's fine. And let's go back to the uh, server side. We're going to copy the text here. So it's going to say you have missed the event current time is we're going to paste it here you have missed the event current time is and it's just going to be t over here in this case t is for the current time up here t is for the seconds remaining to test this game i need to go back to the main script the um the one that does the live event. And we're gonna need to change the start time here. So first I need to find out what is the current time. I'm gonna do print os.time, enter. I'm gonna grab this time, the current time from my output window. I'm gonna stick it right in here. And I'm just gonna add one minute to it. So right now it's 9.16, I'm gonna make it 9. 76. Now we can play and take a look. Hopefully we're early, otherwise we're gonna have to do it again. Oh wow, look at that, six seconds remaining. Five, four, let me close this window. Two, one, zero. The event has started. So you can see that we joined in early, we got the text label. And as soon as the event started, we remove the text label. So when we joined, we were in this part of the uh, the logic, where we fired the um, the time remaining, and then it, it just does the countdown. When it reaches zero, it's gonna do this one, so it removed the label from the screen, and it started the event. Now we're gonna wait for two minutes because we're giving 
uh, we're, we're giving uh, the event a two minute time frame. So we're gonna wait for two minutes and we're gonna come back. We're gonna join in uh, after the uh, event has ended. Actually, you know what? Let's join in right now because the first time we joined in, we were inside this loop right here. So let's join in right now. We should be like right in the middle of the event with no text label at all. Let's see if that's the case. And you can see we are right in the middle of the event. There is no text label at all. All right, so now we're just gonna wait for two minutes and we're gonna come back and we're gonna run another test. It should go into this part of the code and we just wanna make sure that part of the code works. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm pretty sure it has been more than two minutes already. So let's play and take a look. And there it is. You have missed the event. Current time is this, and you can see there is no explosion anywhere at all. All right, so that's how you put a countdown clock inside your text label in the live event. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you again soon.